Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking at the second revision to our sacred calendar. This is the one we did for the Day of Remembrance back in about July the 12th, 2021. Um, we put out this uh, commemorative calendar, which is actually supposed to be a calendar that we could use to track time for the rest of time until, you know, we get to the eighth day when the book of Revelation says, that there will be no time no longer well we're actually supposed to be able to use this calendar or a calendar similar to this to actually keep up with those biblical times but as i'm looking back over this um i've actually been working on this for quite a while now and that is the year that we are in you see here that i have that we are in the 5994th year and on monday that means the years since the creation of Adam, we're in the 5,994th year is what I said, but I believe I made a mistake. Um, I'm not a prophet. Guys, um, the Lord doesn't tell me things. I always have to go in and dig through the scripture uh, to find information, unlike those guys you know, who claim to be prophets and get their information directly from the Lord. Um, the problem with people like me who are digging through scriptures to find the answers, we tend to make mistakes. You know, a person who gets his information from the Lord, you know, if he's actually getting it from our father, he can be sure that that information is flawless down to the second. But for like I said, for people like me, I'm not a prophet. Um, I tend to make errors. Not a lot. Um, I really try hard not to. Uh, but I believe I've actually made an error here when it comes to this year, 5,994. I don't think that's actually the year that we are in. So I'm going to be revising uh, this um, calendar based on what we come up with in this video. That's right. What I'm going to do now is go in and actually try to find out what exact year it is. If it's not 5994 and a Monday, what year is it? And then we'll be making a revision if and when we come up with um, a different come up with a correction, then we'll have to uh, update this particular calendar with that correction. So let's get started. What year is it? All right. Now, first of all, let's come over and let's look at a couple of websites so that we can understand why this is important in the first place. Um, it may seem like an arbitrary thing, you know, as to what year is in, but this actually has importance when you think about the 7,000 years of human history that we read about in the Bible. Some refer to it as the 6,000 year of human history because at the beginning of the 7,000th year is when we enter the millennial age, that thousand year reign when our father or the Messiah will be the king of the planet. Now we're over here at wikipedia.org looking at their webpage called the year 6,000. And you can see a lot of the documents that talk about the year 6,000. Let me just read it right here. It says, according to classical Jewish sources, the Hebrew year 6,000 marks the latest date for the initiation of the Masonic age, meaning according to Jewish sources is actually supposed to start talking about that thousand year reign is supposed to start at year 6000. And by Jewish sources, I think it's possibly talking about the Bible because you see the next sentence is talks about the Talmud, which is also a Jewish source, as well as the Midrif and the Kabbalah even the Zohar all have Jewish origins and they all state that the date by which the Messiah must appear is 6,000 years from creation. All of these books written by different sources at different times all point to the year 6,000 as being possibly the most important year of all of human history and that's because 
that is the time that we experience all of those changes that we hear about in the Bible, like First Thessalonians chapter four, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, uh, Matthew chapter twenty-four, Daniel chapter twelve, and so on. Talk about the Great Awakening. Uh, some call it the Rapture, um, and it goes by other things that point to this significant event that's supposed to happen to humanity in the year 6000 but look here it says according to tradition the hebrew calendar started at the time of creation placed at 3761 bc and the current year is a 581 bc so look at how important this is talking about this 6000th year if you follow the Jewish community and their reckoning of the date, which we're going to talk about in this video, you believe that the year is 5,781. And if you believe that, then you believe we have over 200 years left until we see the second coming of the Messiah, until we see this change that we're talking about, until you see the great awakening or all of these significant events pile into one, the great day of the Lord. If you believe that this is 5,781, then you believe we got over 200 years left before we can expect to see any of those events. So now this video is based on mathematics, not logic, not what we think, feel, believe, but I would ask, in the current climate, do you believe that it is possible that we have another 200 years in our current state before anything significant changes? In other words, is the way things are now going to survive for another 200 years? Well, I personally don't think so. In fact, I stand among a lot of other people who know that this Jewish year 5081 is actually wrong. So let's take a closer look at that. Now we're going to come over to a website called watchjerusalem.co, which is talking about the Hebrew year 5781. Or is it? That's the question that this article is asking. Is this really the year 5081? It starts off talking about the sacred calendar, which it is calling the Hebrew calendar. And as an aside note, you must understand that the Hebrew calendar and the sacred calendar that you read about in the book of Enoch and his book of the luminaries of the revolutions of heaven is actually different. The main difference being that the Hebrew calendar doesn't take into account the 364th day that you read about in the book of Enoch and the book of Jubilees. And because they don't consider this very important 364th day for calibration of the calendar, their calendar is freewheeling, just like Moses and Enoch said it would. And that's why you have their calendar. The Hebrew calendar is off for the year 2021 by a month. In other words, they are celebrating their holy days a month too early in the year 2021. And that is because they're not following the sacred calendar described in the book of Enoch. But anyway, it goes on to say, however, while the Bible gives detailed instructions on how to measure months and days, it doesn't specify how to number years. And this is actually accurate. When you're talking about the Bible, you're really talking about the 66 books and they don't talk much about the years and the reckoning of years at all, except they give you details on when events took place, like the genealogy and the dates of the progenitors, as well as the dates of the reigns of the kings. And those are what we're going to use to determine what year this actually is. But anyway, it says, how do we know which year it is on the biblical Hebrew calendar? Ask many creationalists and they'll say that Adam was created roughly 6,000 years ago, according to the current modern Hebrew calendar, which is figured from creation. We have just started the year 5,781. How is this date figured and how accurate is it? 
So let's look at some of the information on how the Jewish community calculated the year 5781, being the year since the creation of Adam. So let's jump down to this section here. It says years to the destruction. It says counting the years from the creation is fairly simple. Genesis 5 gives the genealogy from Adam to Noah. It outlines the lifespan of each individual and most importantly, how old they were when their respective descendants was born. Still, it is important from this passage to add together these dates to the precise year. Now, let me bring you over to this table that I have been working on to show you what they're talking about. If you look in Genesis chapter five, you see it gives details of the genealogy from Adam through to Lamech, who was Noah's father. It tells you the exact year in which each of the progenitors had their firstborn child or begat the seed of the ancestors of the Messiah. You see here, it says that Adam was 130 years before he begat Shem, who was 105 years old before he begat Enos and so on. So you can add those years up that are given in the book of Genesis chapter five and find out that from the time of Adam or the creation of Adam to the birth of Noah was about 1056 years. Now my number here says 1057 only because I start the creation at year one instead of year zero. There is no such thing as year zero. So we would say that it's 1056 years from the creation of Adam, but the birth of Noah was actually in year 1057 and on Monday. Now coming back over here to watch Jerusalem, it says just taking the raw numbers from Adam to the birth of Noah, there are 1056 years. Now this is important to this conversation because what we're saying here is that the numbers that I came up with matches exactly what the Jewish community came up with for the birth of Noah. The way they calculated it, they came up with 1056 years from the creation of Adam. And like we said, that makes it year 1057 and on Monday. It goes on to talk about Genesis 7:11 tells us that the flood occurred in Noah's 600th year, which takes us to Anno Monday, 1656. And when we look back at my spreadsheet table, we see that that's the exact year that I have the flood being in, in the year 1657, because I started at year one instead of year zero. But my point is that they match. When you look at all of the information that you can find on how the Jewish community came up with the year that they did, that information or that data that they used matches what I came up with for at least the first 1500 years of human history. Then it goes on to say, to count from the flood, the genealogies outlined in Genesis 11 are used. These take us to the day of Abraham, who was born in 1948 and on Monday. So looking back at my table and comparing it, I see that, yeah, way down here, we see Abram being born in 1949. So we and the Jewish community are in agreement, at least to the birth of Abraham. Then things start to go south for the Jewish community and their calculation. It says some difficulty arises during the time period from the patriarchs to the Exodus. The straightforward generational counts stop and Jewish scholars rely on clues from other passages. Exodus chapter 12 verse 40 is a much debated scripture taken to mean the Israelites lived in Egypt 430 years. Now we know this is not the case because this 430 years actually includes the time before Jacob or even Isaac was born. When you look at what actually transpired, 
out of this 430 years that Abraham was going in and out of Egypt, the children of Jacob or the 12 tribes of Jacob or the 12 tribes of Israel spent less than 200 years in Egypt. So the first error that the Jewish community made when it comes to this determining what year this actually is, is this 430 years and how they're trying to combine it with the 400 years that you read about in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. That was a prophecy that was given to Abraham about the captivity, which is ending here in the United States now. But the Jewish community who doesn't recognize this slavery period at all wants to say that that period, that 400 years was actually back there in Egypt. But when you look at the Exodus and the time they came out of Egypt and subtract 400 years, you don't end up with Jacob going into Egypt. You end up back when Abraham received the covenant. He received that covenant when he was 99 years old. You read that in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. And you see in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40 that it was 430 years after he received the covenant was the Exodus there from Egypt. Now, this is my first time reading this information from WatchJerusalem.com, but I see it actually says the same thing here. It says the SOR calendar takes the 400 year date from Isaac's birth when Abraham was 100. However, a century before the SOR calendar was written, the belief was that the 430 year count should begin from Abraham's covenant, which God gave at 99. Now, when you follow the scripture alone, which I did creating this table over here, you see that that is exactly the case. Abraham received the covenant at the age of 99, which it says was one year before the birth of Isaac that you read about in Genesis chapter 17. And we know this to be true because we remember the circumstances surrounding Abraham receiving the covenant. You had the angels that came down and talked to Abraham and Sarah during the time that he received the covenant and they gave him the promise of Isaac, who was born a year later. So you see here that because of this mistake that the Jewish community made in creating their calendar, that threw them off 29 years. And it goes on to say 400 years from Isaac's birth gives us an Exodus date of Anno Monday 2448. So for the first time, you see the Jewish reckoning of the year and my biblical reckoning of the year are exactly the same until you get to the Exodus, which I have taken place in the year 2478. Well, if you look at what the scripture says 2478 and back up 29 years because of the error made by the Jewish community and back up another year because there was no such thing as year zero you see an exodus of 2448 which matches exactly with what the Jewish community would have came up with if they had taken into account the other scriptures and that brings me to a side note here and that is, you see back here when it comes to Terah, that information came from the book of Jasher. And then the Exodus information came from the book of Exodus, neither of which do the Jewish community recognize at all. And that's probably part of the reason why they made a mistake. The thing about these books, guys, is that they are scriptural documents. And if you know anything about scripture, you know that it's not redundant. Anybody who's new to the faith may get confused when they look at four Gospels and think this is the same story told four different times. The Bible must be like that. It's just repeating the same story. Actually, there's not many books that actually talk about the same thing. You don't hear about the Ten Commandments 
only but one chapter in the scripture. It doesn't repeat itself. And my point is, is that some of this information is included in these hidden books like Jasher or Jubilees. So while the Jewish community is rejecting these hidden books under the instruction of the Catholic Church, they are missing certain elements of the information and it's drawing their calendar off so far we see by 29 years it says and first kings chapter 6 and verse 1 tells us that 480 years passed from the exodus to the building of the temple in the fourth year of solomon's reign and they got it as annual monday 29 28 and when we add the corrections for their error, we come up with 2958. And you see that at this point, with the exception of the error they made there with Abram, they're still on track as far as the year of the creation of Solomon's temple. Then notice it says from this point on, things get more complex. Now, he mentioned that earlier up here when he says some difficulties arise and then they lost 29 years. So now he's talking about the complexity increasing by a certain magnitude. So we can assume that they're going to lose a few more years. It goes on to say the date for the end of the reign of Judah's final ruler, King Zedekiah, and the destruction of the temple is 3338 Annual Monday. That takes us to 3368. And you see, that's the year that the scripture points to for that time in which Nebuchadnezzar took away the daily sacrifice. And when we come to Google and simply put in the word Nebuchadnezzar, it says Nebuchadnezzar was a warrior king often described as the greatest military leader of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. He ruled from 605 to 562 B.C. Now, biblical history and non-biblical history converge and actually tell the exact same date for this time in which the daily sacrifice was taken away in 605 B.C. You see, when you simply add up the numbers, that is actually what you come up with. 605 B.C. And even down to the day you see there with that 0.25, that's talking about the 10th day of the 10th month. It's amazing how accurate the scripture actually is when it gives us this 2.5 here pointing to the fact that the daily sacrifice was taken away in the 10th month after three quarters of the year had already passed. So now that everybody's on one accord, you have the biblical data that you're looking at here. You have the Jewish calendar, which we saw their error off by 29 years. And we can account for that as well as non-biblical history all converging in 605 BC. So it is from that date that I actually calculated which year we are in. And this is when the complication started for me, actually. So we know that 3368 AM is the same exact year as 605 BC. So let's look at how I came up with the year 5994. To get from 605 BC, to AD 2021, we have to go 2,626 years. But because there is no such thing as a year zero, the Messiah wasn't born in year zero. If the AD part was accurate, then he would have been born in the year negative one BC. And one year later would have been one AD. There is no year zero at all. So we have to add that year in here to get 2021 from 605 BC. When we come in and add 2626 to the year 3368 annual Monday, we end up in the year 5994 as being the current year that we're in, which would make the year 2022 5995. Now, 
Remember that whole discussion we've been having this whole time with this so-called year zero and how many problems that is causing. Well, like we said before, Adam wasn't created in year one. He was created in year zero. And then exactly 4,000 years later in the year 2028, you had the first advent of the Messiah, like you read about in the book of Luke that occurred in the year 28. That would have made that annual Monday 4001, not 4000. So it's not year 6000 that we're actually waiting for all of these significant events to take place. It is actually 6001, which happens exactly 2000 years after the first advent of the Messiah in the year 2028. So what year is it? This is actually the year 5994 Anu Monday. And I'm sorry if I wasted your time thinking that somehow I had made a mistake with this year at the beginning of this video. But all I've done in this video is prove to myself and hopefully you and everybody else that this is actually the year that we are in. We are currently in the year 5994 AM. But if you see something I did wrong, or if you have any questions or anything, let's continue this discussion down in the comment section of this video.